In this video, I'm going over the work of Anton First. He was one of the designers for Gotham City in the Batman 1989 movie directed by Tim Burton. And once you see Anton First's work, you'll realize how big of an impact he had on Gotham City. Here we go. Thanks for checking out the video. My name is Bernie Gonzalez, and in these videos, I like to share a few of the comics that have inspired me in my own storytelling, in my own artwork. And in this video, I'm going to go over, it's a little bit of an oddity, but I thought it'd be interesting to cover three specific issues of Batman. Batman issue 474, Legends of the Dark Knight number 27, and Detective Comics number 641. Reason being, if you can kind of see by the covers, they all have this sort of charcoal drawing in the background, and Batman is obviously in front of each of them, but the the glue to all of this is Anton First, and if you're not familiar with the name, Anton First was a production designer who worked on uh, the Tim Burton 1989 Batman movie, and specifically, first designed Gotham City and gave it the very gothic dramatic dark deco design and architecture that well now we associate with gotham's and gotham's landscape so a little bit of history before we get into these so after the massive success of the 1989 batman movie batman comics mimicked the well academy award winning art design of the 89 movie by literally having the comics version of gotham look like the city described and uh, first described it as, quote, hell erupted through the pavement and built a city. So how'd they do that? Well, in typical Batman fashion, by having a mad bomber run rampant around the city. And they featured this new Gotham uh, that mirrored the 1989 movie uh, in this three-part Destroyer series and written by Denny O'Neill. And in the story, Gotham's architecture is attributed to uh, an architect named Cyrus Pinckney um, that was actually hired by Judge Solomon Wayne. So certainly a connection to Bruce Wayne. And Pinckney purposely designs the city to look nightmarish, uh, seemingly to act as like a trap for evil because it's got all this winding and spiraling architecture. Uh, but then over time, progress is paved over uh, the Art Deco design and you have more modern buildings and the idea is that the mad bomber the destroyer was going to take down all the progress and reveal gotham's original gothic grandeur so let's kind of dig into these a little bit starting with part one batman 474 and artwork is by norm brayfogel and the good thing is with all of these that the artwork is uh, different for each issue of Destroyer, but you can see right from this big spread that now we have the Murray building that's being destroyed. And won't go through these beat by beat, but you can certainly see Norm Brayfogel's art, his style, the way he drew Batman. We've got the Mad Bomber down here. So nothing really flashy about this new addition to Batman's Rogues Gallery. Feels more like a a character that would have been in 90s TV or, or something along those lines, uh, like a, a Renegade or something like that with Lorenzo Lamas, if you remember that show. So meanwhile, you see that the Mad Bomber, people are kind of getting under his skin. He's certainly not interested in what the new Gotham looks like, and he wants to reveal its uh, its history, you know, its past. Uh the shadows, the, the grotesque structures that kind of kept the evil confused and suppressed. Um, that's what he's interested in. Things like this. And again, you see Norm Brayfogel echoing a little bit of Anton First style. And I'll go over Anton First a little bit more in a second. But just wanted to show a little bit of this. Because again, everything is about this Mad Bomber. And continued in legends 27 this one right here so this one has actually six pages at the end 
of Anton Furse's Gallery of Sketches. Uh, but in the meantime, we get treated to some pretty amazing Chris Sprouse artwork. Again, written script by Denny O'Neill. And now we see the bomber, a little bit of the history, a bit of a flashback, sepia tone. We see some sketches, and you can tell that they're supposed to kind of uh, give a nod to Anton First in his style, and you'll certainly see that when we get to the end here. But Mad Bomber destroying modern buildings to reveal the Gothic architecture that's been uh, basically hidden by progress, uh, a progress that the Mad Bomber certainly does not agree with. And kind of running to the back here, because honestly, this is where we really want to get to, is this right here and featuring again some awesome Anton first artwork um, a little bit about Anton first Burton Tim Burton actually tried to hire Anton first to work on Beetlejuice I think that was uh, released in 1988 uh, but instead Anton first uh, decided to work on a movie called High Spirits and when Burton began working on Batman he brought Anton first on board um, along with the film's art department, uh, first actually tried to make Gotham City uh, what he called like the ugliest, bleakest metropolis imaginable. Imagining like what New York City might have been without like a planning commission, a city that was run by crime with uh, um, architectural styles that, you know, and he called it an essay in ugliness. And you can kind of see that in his artwork, uh, in his concept designs. But again, even between all the uh, Gothic architecture, there's a lot of beauty. Uh, there's a lot of Art Deco stylings that kind of bring to mind uh, the Fritz Lang movie Metropolis, uh, even a more modern day movie, uh, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, certainly inspired by this. But again, you can see all, all of that, the Gothic, the romance, the Art Deco in these charcoal drawings, uh, drawings that were also brought to life by concept designer Nigel Phelps, uh, Derek Medlings, uh, who worked on the miniatures, and um, he had a background working on Jerry Anderson puppet series, and if you're not familiar with those, Thunderbirds, Stingray, uh, Fireball, XL, so kind of neat that at least at the back of this issue, they shared a little bit of uh, you know background on where these buildings are actually located within Gotham City and just kind of reinforcing the fact that these are real places. It's uh, actual police headquarters uh, looking east from the top of the wing building. Just adds to the, uh, I think the term is the verisimilitude that these buildings is exist. Batman lives in this world, but also so do the denizens of Gotham City. There are people who live in these buildings around these buildings and are impacted so into the last section here and this is detective comics number 641 um this one uh which has jim aparo artwork again jim aparo great penciler uh doesn't necessarily lean into the anton first style as much as chris Brouse did in the legends of the dark knight 27 or even Norm Brayfogle, who sprinkled a few in the Batman issue 474. Um, so, again, you get great Jim Aparo artwork, uh, which is just classic, easy to look at. You get a little bit of Anton first stylings here. But I have to imagine, if you are a penciler, an ongoing penciler on any of the big two series, you, you've got a deadline. You're working within a deadline, within a system, and to be given um, extra work on top of just drawing Batman, the rogues Valerie, the characters, and then you have to throw in these extra designs. It's gotta be hard to stay on deadline um, and be able to uh, you know, draw 22 pages uh, in 30 days and get it complete. So that's why this one is not as interesting to look at because while this is a nice picture at the end, this is really uh, apparel's contribution to really cementing what uh, DC was trying to do by bringing in the 1989 movie landscape into comics, uh, but certainly were representative in these covers and just being able to see how now the Gotham that we see, the Gotham that was featured in the Batman animated series, 
which certainly takes some cues from the 89 movie and certainly from Anton First's uh, contribution to Batman uh, cinematically, but then also in the world of comics. So just wanted to share these because it's kind of easy to take for granted that there are a ton of talented people who help shape the vision of the characters that we have. And Anton First, while not necessarily someone associated with comics, very much made a massive impact to the comics that we know now. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this. It's a little difficult to find. I believe this has never been collected into one three-part thing. Um, seems like a no-brainer to collect them all and then to throw in a ton of Anton first sketches, concept sketches, so that way it kind of gives it a, a little context, a little weight, a few behind-the-scenes stuff on why this happened. Just kind of cool to see this as a crossover as well. Only three issues, but when you compare it to the 100-issue mega crossover event that was Batman Nightfall, uh, that began in uh, Batman 491 in 1991. Um, so only 20 issues before this three-part series uh, happened. Um, but only 20 issues later, you would get this mega crossover event that certainly has been collected. Be kind of neat if uh, they did collect these because, again, there's history behind this. So hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching the video.